I'm Daniel Shuloff, a complete charlatan with a massive financial conflict of interest. And this is Dogs, Dog Food, and Dog Meat. On today's show, we're gonna try to answer the question, does my dog need carbohydrates for energy? This is an important question for a couple of reasons. First, because that language, carbohydrate for energy, is something you see all the time in connection with the marketing of pet food products. Often, when companies are providing little narrative overviews of the nutrients in their foods, whether in an advertisement or on a label, they use this language when trying to explain why they use so much corn or potato or whatever in their recipe. That's the go-to explanation that companies tend to use, carbs for energy. The other reason the question is important is that in my experience, dog owners quite often believe that carbohydrate is this magical nutrient that provides your dog with the ability to move around and bark and do all the other things that dogs do with their energy. That for dogs, carbs are basically the only true source of energy, which is problematic because the answer to the question, does my dog need carbohydrates for energy is a resounding no. No, it does not. It is beyond any legitimate debate that dogs most definitely do not require carbohydrate for energy or to become more energetic or anything like that. There are a few different lines of evidence that demonstrate this, and I'll give you a quick overview of each one. The first, as usual, concerns wolves. Wild wolves and domestic dogs are the two most genetically similar species on the planet. They shared a single genetic lineage for more than 99.9% .9 of their evolution as canine species. And as we discussed elsewhere in this series, wolves eat precisely zero carbohydrate. There is no debate. Wild gray wolves don't consume carbs at all, period. And yet, they're incredibly active and energetic animals. Some studies suggest that they travel an average of more than 20 miles each day. And they're not just strolling along or something like that either. In order to eat, they need to pursue big, intense prey like bison and elk and then overpower the animals and drag them to the ground. Literal fights to the death all the time with precisely zero carbs. Another line of evidence concerns the most physically active dogs on the planet, competitive sled dogs. These guys pull sleds for hundreds of miles, days on end in freezing cold environments. They do far more physical work than even the most active house pets would ever dream of. And one thing that's very well documented in the scientific record, and also just as a matter of common knowledge among sled dog enthusiasts, is that you don't feed them carbs, not any. They eat prodigious amounts of food, huge numbers of calories, but it's almost always just protein and fat, no carbs. There are other demonstrations of this reality too. Experiments have been performed where dogs are put on treadmills and made to run without any carbs in their diet and they show no ill effects whatsoever. And unlike nutrients like protein and fat, where AFCO has set minimum daily intake requirements for all dogs, there is no daily carbohydrate intake requirement. Carbs most definitely are not essential nutrients for a dog, not for energy and not for anything else either. So what's going on here? Why do we still see this kind of language used so often by pet food companies? What's true about dogs and carbohydrates is this. Your dog has the ability to metabolize energy from numerous different nutritional substrates. And these include both fat and carbohydrate. And under the vast majority of circumstances, they preferentially metabolize fat. Fat is the preferred source of fuel in that way. But there's an exception. If and only if there's a lot of carbohydrate in the animal's diet, then the animal will tend to metabolize carbs more so than fat. Under most conditions, fat is the preferred fuel source. But if there's a lot of carbohydrate going into the bloodstream, then the animal will shift into a carbohydrate burning mode in order to help it deal with the otherwise toxic glucose that is flooding its system with every carbohydrate rich meal. It needs to do something to deal with all the glucose that's flooding the system so it shifts into a metabolic state whereby it relies more heavily on carbs. And importantly, no one has ever come up with a shred of evidence that this shift produces more or better energy for dogs. In fact, quite the opposite is true, which is why mushers tend to feed their dogs zero carbohydrate diets. So the next time you see a pet food company tell you that it uses carbs in its recipe in order to give your dog energy, I hope you see it for what it is. 
a sleight of hand that misrepresents the real evidentiary record and is designed to make you feel good about the cheap fattening carbohydrate molecules they're using to fill up all their recipes. That's all for today. I'm Daniel Shuloff, a complete charlatan with a massive financial conflict of interest. Thanks for watching.